Mic check, one, two, three, mic check, and let's put Tandor on a Synology NAS. So this is a way to manage your recipes. You got a self-hosted recipe maker. So I'm gonna start by going to tandor.dev, and I'm gonna scroll down to, ba, 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 there's a plans section here, but we're, don't worry, we're not gonna buy a plan. Plans, all the way down, there's a section that says self-host. Check it out, Docker, Docker, that's what we're looking for. I mean, also Synology, but Docker. Let's go to install instructions. And then on the left-hand side, you can click on Synology and it's got instructions on how to do it. It is a community contributed guide. Um, this guide was contributed by the community and is neither officially supported nor updated nor tested. It's gonna be the same thing as what I'm about to give you. <laughs> it's very unofficial. This is, I believe this kind of uses the old way of using Docker files in a Synology NAS, so we're, we're gonna update it. We're gonna use the new container manager. So let's click on Docker, which is the recommended installation. And we'll scroll down to a section where it says Docker Compose. Got Docker Compose here. So we're gonna need to make two files according to these instructions. This is saying, choose your Docker Compose.yaml, download the env file, edit it accordingly, you need a secret key and a Postgres password, and then start your container using Docker Compose up. We can ignore this because Synology gives you a button to do it. All right, so first let's grab our docker-compose.yaml, and that's just here where it says plain. Um, wget, this would be code if you were in Linux to just, you can copy this command and it'll just download it for you in a folder, but we are just gonna copy the raw text right here. And now let's head over to the Synology NAS. All right, I'm in the Synology NAS, and then you just need two programs, as always, to do any of this Docker stuff. You need Container Manager and a text editor, and if you don't have them, type in Container Manager, as perfectly as you can, it'll show up. If Container Manager doesn't show up, that means that it is not supported on your model of Synology NAS. So you might need to Google around and see if others have gotten it to work on your specific model. And then the other program I'm gonna use is just a text editor. So let's close out. I'm gonna, um, let's make a folder for all this stuff to live in because we're gonna make a lot of files here. So we're gonna click into File Station. Scoot you over to the right because I'm gonna be using you a bit. And then I'm gonna go to my Docker share, which you should have as long as you've installed Container Manager. Create folder, and we're gonna call this folder Tandor. We'll keep it simple. You can name it whatever you want though. I don't really care, but I'm gonna name my Tandor. And then we're good. So this is where all of our Docker files are gonna live. So let's click on over to Container Manager, Project, Create. For the project name, we're gonna call you Tandor. Path, let's set it to that folder we just created. So in our Docker share, I'm going to click on Tandor, Select. And then under source, we are going to create a Docker Compose YAML file. And we're gonna paste all of that Docker Compose text that we got from this page right here. Just this blurb all the way down, starting at version and ending on static files. All right, and then we need to make a couple of changes in here. So the first change is here, where we have, actually, I guess this isn't a change. We need to make some additions. So under services, DB recipes, we have a section called volumes. Volumes is typically where we're linking up files. So volumes here, you see this section, this dash and then dot forward slash PostgreSQL. Oh, I didn't pronounce that right. And then to the right of it, it's got a location. Here's how all these Docker volumes work. To the right, this is a, this is a file path that is within the Docker container. So we don't need to worry about this and we don't have to modify it. And that holds true for a lot of Docker, um, a lot of Docker Compose files. Sometimes you do have to modify it if this is the right. You might have to add stuff, um, but that's typically if you're doing some sort of media program, like think Jellyfin or something like that. But for right now, for, oh, sorry, click way off, okay. So for right now, we can ignore what's to the right of the colon, but to the left of the colon, it wants to link a file that is, it wants to link a folder up that is on our Synology NAS. So we're gonna make this. I'm gonna copy this for SQL, and I'm gonna go back to my file manager, and I'm in that Tandor folder that we made, Create folder, post, GraphQL. Cool. I'm gonna right click, click properties, and I'm gonna copy this file path just to show you something. You don't have to do this. But if we go back to Docker Compose, so this period is actually shorthand for whatever folder I'm in, and then the forward slash is just a folder. I'm looking for a folder called PostgreSQL. So this here is the same thing as writing entire file name. So I, I'm just, I just wanna clear that up for you in case you're confused about the period. So just remember, everything to the left of the colon is looking for a path that is living on our Synology NAS. And you can just use a period if this file is gonna live where your Docker Compose is. And our Docker Compose is going to end up in this folder. So that's why we can use a period. .env, we will work on that file in a minute. We just need to make one more folder and that is media files. So I'm gonna copy media files. You can see the period far slash. So it's looking for that media folder wherever this Docker composes. So I'll go back to file station, create new folder, media files. We have made all the folders that we need and then I need to make one more change. And that is under engines recipes. There is a section called ports and port 80 is what it uses by default. 
we can't do that. We, because Synology will already use port 80, so you're gonna get an error. So let's change this to a port that Synology is not using. It's it's all pretty random, so we're just gonna make one up. I'm just gonna type in mm, uh, 40,000. 40,000 is good. And we don't have to worry about what's to the right of the colon. So that would be the, I think they call this a container port. To the left is a host port. So when you're editing Docker Compose files, if you need to change the port number, you typically only have to change what's to the left. And this is gonna be how we access Tandor. That will be all we need. Sorry, I'm clearing my throat so much. That's all that we're gonna need to modify here. You will, if you've followed my other tutorials before, you will notice that we are keeping a couple of the Docker volumes. And the reason for that is because Tandor specifically says that I have to. They've got a whole section of documentation here on why that is. And, oh, they look, bind mounts. That is, that is something that I, keep forgetting to mention. If you are linking up a file like we're doing with media files, that is called a bind mount. See static files, how it doesn't have anything in front, doesn't have a period forward slash, that is called a Docker volume. So a Docker volume is not, it's not really linked up to a place that we know. This, this right here will explain it a lot better. If you just click on this link, and they also tell you why you have to use Docker volumes for these two specific files. And I don't understand it because I'm too stupid, but maybe, you, maybe you'll read it and understand it. So we're done here. I'm going to click Next. I am not going to set up a web station. Click Next, and then Start the Project Once It's Created, and this will fail. Done. And it's going to tell me that we're missing the ENV file, so I'll click Close. There's a reason that I did this in that particular order, though. If I come back to my Tandor folder, click outside of your Tandor folder, and then click back into it. You'll see that there's a compose.yaml file. Because... Synology doesn't let you just right click and create a new text file. This is an easy way of getting a text file in there. So we're gonna create our ENV file now. I'm gonna double click compose.yaml, file, save this as, and I'm going to save you as .env. And that's it. No, you know what, .env. And then I will click save and just make sure that you're still in that same folder. So I can see my compose.yaml files here. I'm in my Tandor folder. So I will save you and I'm going to delete everything in here. Now let's get the, the text that we need for the ENV. So we're gonna go back to the Tandor page. I'm gonna scroll back up to where they mention step two. Step two, download the ENV configuration. So all we have to do is highlight this URL that's in here. Basically from HTTPS all the way to the part where it says template, .env.template. So I'm gonna open up a new tab, paste that link in, and we have our env file. I'm gonna select all of this, go back to my Synology NAS, and paste it in this env text file. I need to make two additions here. It wants two passwords, right? Because according to the instructions, it says edit accordingly, you need to set a secret key and a Postgres password. And they have more instructions here. Random secret key, use for example, base64. This is a code that you can write if you're on a Linux machine. I'm not sure, maybe it'll work in Windows or a Mac also, but I'm gonna keep it easier. I'm just gonna type in Bitwarden password generator, and I will generate a 32 character long password, cause that's really long. And then you have to, you have to click regenerate at least three times. Otherwise, every single person on earth can guess your password. So I'll paste that in, and I'm gonna do the same thing for Postgres password, so I'll go back, one, two, three, four, five. The more times you click, the less likely anyone can guess this 32 character password of random letters and numbers. And I will paste that into Postgres password. I don't have to use these anywhere else. I don't have to memorize them or worry about them. They just need to stay in this file. So I'm gonna click file, save, close out of here. And guess what? We can launch Tandor. I'm gonna exit out of file station. I'm back in container manager. I will go into project, right click Tandor and click build. So now Tandor is gonna download and verify and extract everything that it needs to run. Project successfully built and we've got error code zero. So error code zero is good. I don't know why, or exit code, not error code. Ex error code is probably bad. Exit code zero is good. So we'll close and we've got a green light. And if we click on container, we can see that we have three different Tandor containers. Ba -ba -ba. That's all that we need. So now to access Tandor, what we need to do is go to the IP address of our Synology NAS colon, um, 30,000, I think, is the port number that I put in. If you forgot what number you put in, click on Project, double-click Tandor, and then YAML Configurations. This has got that text file that we that we made from before. So if I scroll down to Engines Recipes, I can see ports, 40, sorry, 40,000. That's where we want to go. So I'm going to type in the IP address of my Synology NAS, colon, 40,000. If you don't know the IP address of your Synology NAS, just come up to the top right and click on Widgets, and make sure that you have System Health checked on. 
and you should have a LAN thing here that'll tell you your IP address. You might even have multiple LANs. So if the first one, it, your Synology NAS probably starts with 192.168. something something, but you can check all these other LAN ports if you're not finding the right one. Basically, you're gonna have one LAN port for each Ethernet jack that your Synology NAS has. So you probably either have one, two, or four. Let's go, so yeah, let's try out the link. So IP address of my Synology NAS, colon 40,000. And this will not work for me because I copied and pasted my URL, which has HTTPS. You cannot use HTTPS. You have to use HTTP to access this. And now, hey, I've got the Tandor set up. There is a chance that Tandor does take a little bit to install and make it, like, create all of its stuff. So, yeah, give it a minute if that's still happening. It might take, I think it says three minutes, but, you know, maybe five to ten minutes if uh, it's still not booting up for you, but... That should be good, and you should be all set to use Tandor. Let's try it out. Let's create a name. I'm going to do my legal birth name, volume data 21, and then it wants, if I type in like volume data, volume data for password, check it out. It says you're stupid and that you need a better password. So let's make one. One, two, three, four, five, copied. Uh, ha ha, paste, paste. Create a super user account. No, Google, don't ever save this. And no, I'm never going to go into the settings and make it not do that. So you can just log in, volume data 21, enter your password, remember me, sign in. Google will ask you again if it wants you to say the password. I don't, create a space and you're good. Get yourself a recipe. Let's do that, let's do that real quick. I'm gonna type in a recipe for, recipe for Mafungo. And we'll get it from Salami's, Salima's Kitchen. Salima's Kitchen could be a good Mafungo recipe, not sure. I'm gonna copy that link and then click on import. Paste the link. Oh, check it out. It's got pictures and keywords and all sorts of stuff here. And then, oh, I didn't do this right. Let me scoot you up here. There you go. Import. And there you go. Traditional Puerto Rican mofongo. Cinco minutos. And you're all set. There was one thing that I wanted to talk about with the Tandor install. Oh, I'm gonna have so many recipes. You can also create your own. That's probably what you're mostly gonna use this for. And that is the use of Docker volumes. You most likely don't have to worry about this. But if you're curious, you can read their section here on volumes versus bind mounts. Bind mounts are what a lot of people prefer to use because you know where all your files are. Docker volumes are typically Docker's way of storing files somewhere on the system, but it's not very easy to access. But this is especially true on a Synology NAS. So as you can see here, I have static files and Nginx config under the volume section, but it doesn't have a forward slash in front of it. I'm going to stop my Tandor. Stop my Tandor containers here and close out. So it doesn't have a forward slash in front of it or a period forward slash or a volume one Docker forward slash thing. It's just on its own, the word static file. So that means that Docker is going to create a Docker volume for it. And you can see it also has to be referenced on the bottom. If this is missing, then it'll throw an error. So you can see how many Docker volumes it's going to create. It's just these two. So this shouldn't be a big deal for you. Even if you have to uninstall Tandor and reinstall it, I actually did this. But these Docker volumes will stay on your Synology NAS. And the way to get rid of them, the only way that I know of is to SSH into your machine. I'm not super comfortable right now with explaining SSH because there are definitely security vulnerabilities for opening SSH. And I don't know the status of if your NAS is open to the internet or not or whatever. But if you know how to SSH and you're comfortable with it, I will just show you really quickly how that works. You would go into your NAS and then type in sudo docker volumes space ls and hit enter. It'll ask you for your password. Let me get my password. Do you guys want to see my Synology NAS password? Probably not. So it'll ask for your password because we're using a sudo command. So I will enter my password. Docker volumes is not a docker command. That is because I typed that in wrong. So now we're going to type in sudo docker volume, not plural, ls. And we can see that we have these two Tandor Docker volumes. If you ever want to get rid of them, you want a super clean install of Tandor, you can just type in this command, sudo docker volume rm space, and then just copy the name of the volume that you want to get rid of and hit enter. Error response. Ba -ba -ba. Oh, because it's in use. You actually have to make sure that this project does not exist anymore. So let me go back to container manager and project, I'm gonna delete Tandor. So let's say we wanna get rid of Tandor. We don't want it anymore, we don't need it. You'll delete the project, so then you can come back. All right, now we can type in that same command. If I hit the up arrow on my keyboard, it'll just repeat whatever the last command is that I typed in. So sudo docker volume rm tandor nginx config, and it should return the exact same name, and that means that it is gone. So if I hit the up arrow a couple of times, I can go back to the sudo docker volume ls, and I can see that I only have that one Tandor one left. So the other one was deleted. So I can run that same command, sudo docker volume rm, and then copy that name, paste it. And that docker volume is going to be gone too. So if I type in sudo docker volume 
ls, all of my Docker volumes are gone. So that is how you would get rid of Docker volumes in a Synology NAS. Don't have to use them. It's probably best not to, but in the specific case of Tandor, they mention that this will not work without using Docker volumes. Oh, if you're wondering what this command means, by the way, so sudo means super user. If you just type in Docker volume ls, it gives you permission errors. So you type in sudo. That's basically running a command as an administrator. And then Docker is just, we're gonna use a command from the program Docker and volume. You can, I think you can type this in and it'll just tell you all the stuff that you can do with it. So you can create a volume, inspect, ls, you can prune. Prune is a decent one, but just remember, it's gonna remove all unused volumes. So I could have typed in, um, ba -ba -ba. I could have typed in sudo docker volume prune and it would have gotten rid of those and click yes, yes. But you have to be really careful in doing that because imagine you just happen to have a Docker project that was down, but maybe not deleted or that you still wanted to use or that was in progress. It's gonna delete all of those as well. So be very careful if you're gonna use, a, if you're gonna use the command prune. But that is how, you're getting, you're getting in the weeds now if you're installing Tandor and getting into SSH. I'm gonna dead me out. There you go. You have successfully installed Tandor on your Synology NAS. Good luck to you.